This is daytime today, but actually it's nighttime as I'm recording this. Uh, how are you? Here I'm James Lott Jr. at JLJ Media. Uh, I've been out of town for the last week. I was in Kansas City having a vacation and doing some stuff. And I am back and we had some major stuff happen while I was gone. One of the things was the death of Billy Miller. And I was on the interwebs today, looking around, you know, this was, this was Twitter or X, whatever you want to call it nowadays, and Facebook. And I get some stuff. And I'm seeing people, some of my colleagues, going off on folks. Um, and I was just like, what's going on? Like, I don't know. I'm not really on there like that. And I, when I looked and I was like, uh, people talking about um, GH didn't do nothing compared to what YR did when Billy Miller died and what's going on over here. And creators screaming at them going, do not talk crap about people. You know, let certain people, love, you know, handle this. I mean, it was like, there's a whole thing about that. And I saw people's responses. There are folks who think that GH didn't do enough or Frank did enough to, to help Billy, to, to, to not help Billy, to express how much Billy meant to them and why not you know why not they did a they kind of shut down shop let the let the cast talk about it and have a space to talk about it. the whole thing so Billy Miller was on three different shows he was on all my children he's been on other things too but in terms of soaps all my children young and restless and general hospital and I remember when and so after he died and I made I, I made a post I did a, I did a, a post and then I did a um daytime today episode I have people inboxing me saying, you know, why don't they talk about his mental state and why aren't they, why aren't they mentioning anything and, and all this stuff. And I'm like, I had heard rumblings that he may or may not have had a hand in, you know, in his own demise and all this stuff. And, but I always say for me, and this, this is what my show does. I know my buddies over at Dish and Days do the same thing. We don't, we, we don't report on nothing until we actually get confirmation for stuff i never just we i don't i just don't i i just don't do that um we don't i don't report on gossip um things like that we just don't and especially with someone's death i want to be as delicate as, as possible of course well his mother made a statement which basically said he lost his battle with depression and, and different things and i i can't you know and I can't imagine losing a child. I just can't. I can't. Um, and then a child in the public eye. You know, if my children die or grandchildren die, just God forbid they died before me, you guys wouldn't know unless I said something to you guys. They're not in the public eye. This person's a public eye. And I had read a statement from, I think, a cousin of his and then an aunt or uncle or something like that. And then so people were, were writing stuff. And she wanted to put these because there's rumors out there, and she wanted to put the rumors to rest. And um, the highlight mental health, she's you know had. And you can read her statement; it's out there. You can read her statement; that's out there. Um, I can't imagine her having to put get it together. But I know there are some folks like, why hasn't so and so say anything? Why didn't so and so say anything? They didn't do this. They didn't do that. And you know, I this what this is you know soap fans sometimes amaze me and sometimes, sometimes I'm not amazed. Sometimes I'm like, whatever. It's just, it's, I'm just like, I'm really surprised that there's now this back and forth about it. And my thing has always been, like I said in the last video, we have to show compassion because these are people who are people. These are humans. Yes, you see them on your TV shows, your fans are theirs. But when personal tragedy happens, and that's a person who just went through a, lo a loss this year, uh, a near loss three times this year, uh, near losses, I know what that's like. And you're just dealing with the effects of just whatever. And I've lost friends, and I've lost exes, and that's always weird, too. I've lost colleagues, ex-colleagues. That's weird also. Um, when I mentioned September 11th, on my show 50 plus i'll talk about losing 13 employee colleagues that was crazy in 9 11 when i worked at morgan stanley dean witter and i understand the public's fascination because this, this was real and, and you know we're all everybody's kind of guilty of wants to know how certain key people are feeling 
So you just want to know. We want to know if they're okay, if they're feeling it, if they must be, must be devastated. I mean, there's a, there's a fascination with that. I totally, I totally get it. We'd be lying if we didn't say it was there. But I think we have to remember, and we, it's, it's all of us, have to remember that they are humans. That if someone doesn't say something right away or post something, it's okay. Um, it was funny because someone had, I, I forgot, it was some other post, someone else had died, and the person was like, I'm making a statement because you guys bullied me in making a statement. And I was like, hey, this person is grieving, but now because everybody's like looking for to make a statement, let's make a statement. Then I've seen some folks online who say they're with PR. I didn't look them up to see if they are for sure, but they, they're like, I'm from PR and they have people who handle this. But still, maybe, still, maybe the person is just not ready. There are people who are just not ready even to go to the PR and say, make a statement. I'd rather someone not say anything and handle it and come out later if they want to than put out a, just put out a statement and make everybody happy. And it'd be a forum statement like we 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 miss so and so and they're a great they're a great colleague blah blah. I rather have something. I rather have something that's heartfelt, at a time when they're ready. And I think for some people, there's people out there who don't give a, don't don't uh, excuse my language don't give a shit. It's all for looks and show. They just they just want to be nosy and they just want to know what's going on. And they want to have, they want to post it and repost it and get likes and people will follow them. And it's all, it's all performative for some people. I know it is. They don't give a shit if that person cares or not, if they're hurt or not. They just want to hear that. Then I know there's some people who are major fans of a person who dies and they follow their lives and they, so they, they really are heartbroken and they do want to hear from someone who was close to him for comfort and for, and for healing. There's that there. So there's that contingency. Um, but we have to, again, remember, and someone brought this up, GH lost a bunch of former employees recently. And so it's it's probably a little tough, right, for them. Um, but like Frank Valentini made a statement, they of, but people choose to try to tell people what's enough and not enough. That almost reminds me of, you don't want a funeral, James, or your mother doesn't want a funeral. Don't you have to have a funeral? No, you don't have to jump your shit. You don't have you don't have to do anything. You do what's best for you. You say you you you, you grieve the way you want to grieve. You you respond the way you want to respond. Um, not everybody not everybody can just go ahead the first day and put out a statement. Uh, some folks need to sit on it, and of course, with some people, they know the public's waiting to hear. It's going to hang on every word they write. So sometimes you want to make sure that it sounds good and it sounds truthful and it sounds compassionate and you just, you don't want just to put out anything to put it out there. And so I just say, we have to be just, it's just social media has done, social media can do some wonderful things and bring folks together and can, we have a great, and all this stuff and information, it's an information highway, get things faster. And then sometimes social media is just the pits of hell. In other words, it's one or the other. Um, and people just, it's its too much. So I just i just think, you know, of course, I'm a commentator, so that's why I'm giving my two cents. You can tell me to go to hell or whatever. You don't agree with me. I don't really give a shit. My thing is I always speak on what's going on out there. I speak my truth and what I see and what I think, um, which everyone should do. And everybody, it's everybody's right to do that. Um, but I still will want to give compassion to people and let folks go through it. And when they are ready, and if they want to, they will make a statement, whether it's through a PR person or themselves personally, they will, they will do their, they will do what they need to do. Um, we never know exactly the kind of relationships people have with people who are no longer with us. Um, and secondly, mental health is very important. Uh, I have started mental health Zooms over the last year. Uh, I do one on caregiving. I do one on just general mental, mental health Zooms. And also, I just talk about mental health all the time. I talk about mine. I'm a person who's tried to commit suicide myself years ago and had suicidal thoughts over the years over various things. 
I've been very open and honest about that. Um, I'm not bipolar or have depression, but I have major things happen to me that can bring you to the brink of suicide. So, um, and that's the thing too. There's people who have a chemical imbalance and it's tough as nails to get through the day. And then there's some folks who go through a series of events that can drive you to feel very low and feel like there's no help in sight. Um, you can also feel very lonely um, in the middle of a crowded room. There's a lot of things that we don't, we just don't know that's out there. And I can personally tell you, I have felt all of those things. Um, I do fight to still be here. Um, many of which is of you out there who are, are wonderful to me. Um, I've also sought help. Um, and it's been ongoing, off and on, ongoing help and um, because this world is to be still tough uh, and everything. And I just think it's, and, and more people are talking about it now. And I just want to give a shout out to my buddy, Maurice Bernard, with State of Mind. Um, I have another friend of mine on Instagram uh, who's always talking about the mental health of, of people. Um, I have friends who post, you know, positive, encouraging things daily. Uh, their stories and reels and pages. I appreciate all. I, I wish I could name all of you, but so there's many of you do this. Um, that I think it's, you know, we have to create these spaces, and that's what I'm trying to do all the time create spaces for people to talk if they want to talk. Sometimes they don't want to talk, sometimes they want to listen, sometimes they want to just watch something. And so, to all my fellow content creators, keep doing what you're doing because sometimes just watching your content saves a life, keeps them going um so that's i think it's just something we just there are us who make content for you that's what we should do uh continue doing but i also offer a safe space for people to talk and i'm also here to talk uh if you need anybody to talk about something so um there's, there's no shame no guilt nothing stuff happens life is hard sometimes life can be ugly and not beautiful sometimes uh and you have to get through it you know, and so there's no stigma whatsoever, but I just go back to the public, I talk with figures and people having to say things. And we let all that go. Just wait till they're ready. And when they say something, they say something. And and the judging of the rating system kind of, well, this person is a 10, and this company is a 10, they said that, and this company is a five. I mean, it just, who cares? The person's still dead. It doesn't matter if so and so says something beautiful and wonderful or doesn't say anything at all, they're still dead. And it's still a tragedy and it's still sad. And with Billy Miller's case, it's still way too young. And he lost his battle with his depression. And that's just, that's the bottom line. I'm James Lott Jr. Daytime today is everywhere. Talk to you next time.